So you want to do Model UN. What's up stator tots and welcome aboard. This video is for anyone interested in doing Model United Nations, be that you're a seasoned delegate, new to the concept entirely, or just preparing for your next conference. Either way, I'm here to help. Now MUN, Model UN, or Model United Nations, is a club organization found in middle schools, high schools, and colleges worldwide. They roleplay as countries. That's literally all they do. But there's more to MUN than just that, right? And obviously, yeah, you'd be right. MUN is an exciting new way to stimulate diplomacy, and for people interested in going into international affairs, it's a great way to meet people with similar interests to yours. Today I'm going to walk you through everything MUN, so you'll be right at home in your next conference. So, let's jump in. Before you step foot in a conference, there's a lot of work you gotta do to make sure you walk out with that gavel. Gavels are first place trophies in modern conferences. You'll be given a country and a topic, typically varying depending on the room you're in. Rooms can vary from... The UNEP, Disarmament and National Security. The UN Office on Drugs and Crime. The Security Council, ooh, they're special. The UN General Assembly, and many, many, many more. Topics can vary wildly as well, from climate change to peacekeeping reform to arctic geopolitics. You could debate about anything and everything. You want to ensure that you know everything possible about your topic walking into that debate room, so you need to make sure you're well researched beforehand. Here are some great resources. Background guides are always provided by the conference on the topic. They should be seen on your conference website and they should have every topic you'll be debating about. The CIA World Factbook has a great bio on every single country in the world. The UN.org Virtual Dag Hammer School Library has literally every speech and every resolution made by your country. Country. It's a great place to see how they're acting in the real UN. Most of the time, countries just straight up post their policy on their own websites. So do some googling and take a look until you find a government-backed website. And ChatGPT is great if you want to have a conversation about something you don't really know about. Plus, they provide sources if you ask them to. If only there was a way I can learn more and more about the automation industry. Hey ChatGPT, where can I learn more and more about the automation industry? Aw oh, man, you ever heard about this thing called RPA Today? Say what? RPA Today? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, with today's sponsor, RPA Today, you can get updates weekly on what's going on in the automation industry, all for free. But get this, not only do you get free news every week on the automation industry, but it comes right to your email free of charge. But get this, you can also get access to webinars with high profile figures in the automation industry. That's right, ladies and gents. Use the link in the description today to get access now to RPA Today and their great source of news. Automation's coming for us all, so you might as well know a thing or two before we bow down to our AI overlords. Okay, ad break over. All this research is going to be pretty important because you're going to have to use it to write a position paper. These papers are important because typically at most conferences, they're required if you want a place, which you do. They're not hard to write. It's literally just one page talking about the problem, what's been done beforehand, and how you plan to solve it. Typically though, conferences can be really picky about how they like their position papers, so check their website and they should have a template there for you that you can just copy and base yours on. After the paper's done, you should just be grinding out research until the day of the conference. I recommend using a mind map to plan out your solution so you can actually see your line of thought and the numbers backing it up. Some questions to think of are, does it use money? Where's the money coming from? Does it actually make sense with your foreign policy? How will it actually solve the issue at hand here? And a quick warning, do not ever write your resolution before you step into committee. This is pre-writing and this is always illegal. Your resolution should be written in committee surrounded by other delegates and not beforehand. So don't do that. Now that you're prepared, it's time to go into Now the first thing at every conference is usually an opening ceremony in which all the delegates will gather in this big room and the people running the conference, also known as the Secretariat, will give lengthy and lengthy speeches about stuff no one really cares about. So, you're free to use this time to rip out your phone, do a little research, or start planning your opening speech. When you walk into a room, there's gonna be placards everywhere. You're gonna find your placard, sit down, and shut up. Often, people like to fraternize before a conference, but this is usually just a way to manipulate people into working with them later. If you're into that, you're free to go do that. Go for it. There's also gonna be a table in front of the delegates. This is the chair and the co-chair, and they're the ones moderating debate and probably giving placements. Since they're deciding who the winner is, you wanna make sure you're sitting in a spot where they can clearly see and hear you in every speech. Once debate starts, here's how it works. Someone's gonna move to open debate, everyone's gonna vote on it, and then the chair's gonna ask for motions on the floor. There are two main motions to choose from, a moderated caucus and an unmoderated caucus. A moderated caucus, or a mod, has a set speaking time, a set time in general, and a set topic. They're very formal and are moderated by the chair. An unmoderated caucus, or unmod, has no speaking time, no topic, and just has a set overall time. These are typically used when delegates wanna get up out of their chairs and walk around and work with other groups known as blocks to finish and write their resolutions. To move for a mod, you'd say, Russia moves for a 530 on the topic of national sovereignty. To move for an unmod, all you gotta say is, Russia moves for a 10 minute unmoderated caucus. 
The goal of these is to eventually develop a paper called the Resolution that aims to solve the issue at hand. Make sure that your resolution also sticks to foreign policy though, that's important. Here's how writing a resolution works. You start off with a name. These are usually creative, typically acronyms, and at most conferences, the more fun, the better. Down here's the sponsor list. These are the people who are actively writing the most of the resolution. You should be right here first in line to get credit for working and spearheading this resolution. Below here are the signatories, which is often the most misunderstood part of resolutions in general. Being a signatory does not mean you agree with the paper. Most of the time, people who are signatories often hate the paper. Right down here are called preambulatory clauses. They're pretty easy to write, they're just verbs, and they just lay out the foundations of what the paper is trying to do. Below them are operative clauses, which are the important ones. These actually lay down what's going to happen with the resolution. And if you have any trouble writing any of them, don't be afraid to consult your partners and other delegates. A resolution is a group effort and should be done with everyone there. And a pro tip, have everyone writing, either on paper or online, depending on the conference, choose a certain color to mark their writing. This is a great way to see who's doing what and to make sure you get credit for all the writing you're going to be doing. Once resolutions are done, you'll move into author's panel, where the sponsors stand in front of all the delegates and get absolutely grilled on their paper. Delegates who excel at author's panel are usually the best of the best. After Author's Panel, there's going to be a short period for amendments where you can work with the opposing block to make changes to their paper and they'll try to make changes to yours. Try to work and be cooperative, it can usually result in getting your paper passed, which is always good. Once all said and done, it's time to enter voting procedure. I hope you persuaded enough of the room because here, majority rules, except you're in Security Council where these five can just veto whatever the heck they want. Whether the paper gets passed or not, it doesn't really matter. You're done! Some basic tips for GA are, always refer to your country in the third person, no eyes, so you'd say the Russian Federation believes, not I believe. If a country calls you out negatively in debate, you can ask for a right of reply, which allows you to speak after them to retort the accusations. Try to speak every opportunity you can, several times in a mod if you have to. Try to make motions every opportunity you can. Chairs take notice of this. Make an effort to lead your block. You can be nice, just you have to be assertive as well. And finally, do not work with just the friendly people. Foreign policy should always trump personal connections, and you should know beforehand who you're allowed to work with. Now, the vast majority of MUN is done in this type of format, known as General Assembly or TA. But there are two smaller, yet even more exciting rooms that I haven't even talked about yet. And these are... Now, crisis rooms are what I personally excel at. It involves fast-paced planning, a lot of action, and a lot of cheating, lying, and manipulation. If you think that sounds right for you, feel free to continue watching. In a crisis room, you're not a country, but rather an individual, and the rooms are typically not present-day problems, but historical or fictional. Additionally, you don't work on massive resolutions, but pass these smaller things called directives. They accomplish the same things, just directives are far smaller and get passed typically hourly. In Crisis, there are two rooms, the front room and the back room. The front room is where normal debate goes on. You're still going to be arguing with people, and there are still mods and unmods, so be ready to debate still. The back room is special, however. This is where you can write to whoever you want, be that your secretary, the president, or literally anyone you could think of. Here, you'll use backroom notes to advance something called a crisis arc, in which you have a grand plan that will take place over the course of committee. Your plan can be literally anything, but most crisis arcs are starting a new religion or cult, overthrowing the current government, going to war with literally everyone in the room, or seceding a country, or taking the entire room down with you. Every few hours, the room will receive something called a crisis update. This is where the back room will come out and update the room on the happenings going on in secret. Some good tips for crisis rooms are, do not write notes about other people, you only get them hourly, so use them to advance your own arc, not investigate others. Talk literally as much as possible. Motion literally as much as possible. In your very first crisis note, explain your end goal explicitly to the back room. Make a newspaper in committee. Media control is incredibly powerful in crisis rooms, and do things that will get people talking and take divisive action. With crisis out of the way now, there's only one more type of room to talk about, and that's... Specialized, or spec rooms, are a nice blend of the high-speed action of crisis and the formal debate of GA. Typically, you're not countries, but once again, individuals or organizations. There's no back room like in crisis, so you actually have to collaborate with the people in the room if you want to get stuff done. To get things done, you're going to have to pass directives. These are very similar to the ones in crisis, and you'll still have crisis updates to keep debate fresh and interesting. Other than that, there's not really much to talk about. They're just the child of GA and crisis rooms. Some tips for specialized are, be prepared for literally anything. It's not rare to see specialized rooms either go full GA and have resolutions, or full crisis and have background notes. You should go in making sure you have one or two big solutions to the problem, in case you have to do resolutions, and have a lot of smaller ideas you can build upon during debate. And with all that said, you should be ready for your first MUN conference. Now go out there, join your local club, or start your own. I'm rooting for you. Thank you very much for watching. Shout out to the sponsor RPA Today. Once again, thank you to them. And honestly, yeah, MUN is just a passion project of mine. I felt like making this video for a while because there's no good tutorial on YouTube on how to do it. So I hope you enjoyed it.